Hello and welcome, it's the end of the first week of August. Now for regular viewers, you'll be excited. The news desk is back. Why is the news desk back? We're going to be looking at this season so far. We've had issues, we're behind where we should be. We've had a lot of failures. I'm going to be assessing this week whether the season so far has been a total disaster or just a little bit rubbish. So if we look at some archive footage of the plot, past couple of years, the sunflowers, it just looks a lot greener and lusher. We're going to go to Dave, who's going to do a quick summary of the issues so far. Two. So let's have a wander down the plot and I'll show you the issues that I'm having. I'll try not to be too negative, but we are trying to find out what's gone wrong. Strawberries were all right. Sweet corn. So this is my third or fourth sowing. Third, I think. Third, to be fair, sowing of sweet corn. And only six have survived. All the other sowings eaten by slugs. And they are behind where they should be. Sweet peas, same problem. So hundreds of seeds that I've saved from previous years. They are so far behind, only just come into flower now. Potatoes ready to harvest main crops. Green beans. It's my third sowing of green beans. So the finally, I started sowing green beans. I started sowing them in May. Every time I pop the heads up out of the ground, devoured. So the weather's picked up lately, but I just so many lost green beans. Good news in terms of the onions which seem to be protecting my one remaining pumpkin plant. So we do have pumpkins on these. But I lost all of my other pumpkin plants. All like 30 of them. I've lost all my button and squash. This bit was full of courgettes. Again, all gone. They were quite sizable plants when I put them out. Within a couple of weeks, all gone, all eaten. Got an issue with Swedes there again. <laughs> so these, and then the very next week, was very cold, and they'll also be nibbled. We got a success with some parsnips there. Got some tear up at the back there, but again, a lot of them have been nibbled. We wander around to the new plot. Tomatoes, okay, but behind where they should be. We'll go in this a little bit, which is a protected area. One chilli plant left, the rest are stalks where they've been nibbled. Even things like the gladioli. We've got a couple of plants here, but they just seem to be behind where they should be. Down this frame, so all along here, green beans all popped up on the ground and then got eaten. And I've got very few surviving sweet peas that are very much behind where they should be. I'm just showing you empty, empty bits of the plot of them. Down here, yes, we've got tomatoes on the outside. Two rows of chard. We have one surviving chard. Same here. Two rows of beetroot. We've got about five or six plants survived. So, not issues with germination really, but maybe slightly. Real issue is slugs um, or something eating my seedlings as soon as they pop up out the ground or even if they're larger plants like the courgettes when you pull them out just decimate it so that's my assumption i really need some expert opinions though is it is it slugs and the weather that's been causing me the problems i back to dave at the news desk so i'm going to pick up on a couple of suggestions of what dave said might have gone wrong there let's let's see if we can get some more information on the weather hello hello Weather expert here, how, how, how do you get that job? Umbrella and sunscreen, does that make you a weather expert? Not so much, but I'm the only one with a weather map. Okay, that's it, no, it's good enough for me. Off you go. Nice one. 
Give me a minute. I just need a grand entrance. They're this in, they're this in a rehearsal. Where, where's he gone? Hand over to our weather expert. So, umbrella or sun cream? Which have we needed the most lately? I'll give you a clue. It's the umbrella. Ella. Ella. Right, over to the weather map. So, I've got my weather map. I've got my weather map. I don't have any blue paint, so you'll have to excuse the brown water. But the state of rivers these days, that's maybe more accurate. I've got my weather symbols. I'm just going to stick them on. So what's the weather been like in the UK lately? We'll start last year, 2023. March, July, October and December were all in the top 10 wettest months since 1836. September to December last year was the wettest September to December in over 20 years. If you look at the months that we had so far in 2024, January to July, although the temperatures sort of average maybe sometimes it don't feel like that if it's dull weather but rainfall more than half the months have had more than average rainfall and when it comes to sunshine hours five out of the seven months we've had so far this year have had less sunshine than normal on average 10 percent less sunshine than normal which obviously affects plants growing some months have had 20 percent less sunshine than normal so in summary it has been dull and wet i think i can get rid of the sun i think we can get rid of the white fluffy cloud dull and wet is my summary for the uk so far this year now i'm aware i've got some global viewers from around the world so let's head off to um just a world view really high level of weather so it's a bit hard to summarize the whole world's weather in just a word or two so i'm going to use the word weird weather report over back to dave some interesting information on the weather there Let's try and find out some more about slugs. Hello. Oh, hello. Dave, we're not doing accents. No. Okay. Clothes? A bit late now, isn't it? What, what are you supposed to be anyway? Science expert. And are you? Not so much, not so much. That weather guy was pretty good, wasn't he? Have to try our best here. Just, just, just give it a go, but lose them safety goggles, yeah? Will do. So what do we know about slugs? What is a slug? It's a tough skinned terrestrial mollusk that lacks a shell and secretes mucus for protection. What do slugs like? They like moist environments. They come out at night or cloudy damp days. So judging by that weather summary this year is perfect for slugs. What do slugs like to eat? My seedlings mostly. I've lost all my sunflowers this year. A load of sweet peas, 90 plus percent of my pumpkins, all my cars, yes, and a load of green beans and stuff. They can lay 80 odd eggs six times a year, so combating slugs is key. So I've categorised combating slugs into four main areas. Things slugs like, things slugs don't like, things that like slugs and things that don't like slugs. So things slugs like, they love beer, so you could make little beer traps, they get attracted by that crawling and die. I've done something similar, dried yeast, flour, sugar, water, in little jam jars, just sort of sunk into the soil slightly, they crawl in there, they love it. They love moisture and hiding places, so the less little nooks and crannies you've got that a moist weather can hide, the better. Now, it's an allotment, so maybe that's not practical. Things slugs don't like, which well, is the opposite of moist hiding places. They don't like dry open spaces. They don't like copper barriers. So, for example, on this pump pot, you could have a copper band around there. They don't like crawling across that. Apparently, it electrocutes them. Gives them an electric shock. They don't like sort of 
spiky, sharp thing. So things like eggshells or sharp sand. Apparently, if you've got like coffee grounds and you put them down, if they crawl over that, the caffeine in that kills them. And they don't like strong smelling plants like onions, mint, rosemary, garlic. So my only surviving pumpkin when I transplanted it out is in the middle of some onions. So maybe that oniony smell is keeping the slugs at bay. Things that like slugs, natural predators, frogs, toads, birds. So I've got a pond. Hopefully that's got some wildlife in it. I've seen a frog once, I've seen a frog once. maybe a newt as well. Anyway, the more natural predators you've got around, the better for eating those slugs. And things that don't like slugs, humans. Obviously you've got the old fashioned method of picking them out of a plant and doing what your conscience allows you to do with those slugs. So a lot of these sort of remedies if you like, or, or ways to combat slugs, deter them, keep them away, or kill them even. Some are uh, the more suited to if you've got a few pot plants at home. So for example, an allotment, you can't cover it all in sand, or how many eggshells would I need? How many coffee grounds would I need to sort of cover areas? So, you know, maybe it's more useful for pot plants and things like that. I've tried to sort of build a slug proof shelf, put some plant pots, metal shelf with a, like, a rim on it so it's hard for them to climb up and access those green beans and that's been quite successful, we've got some success there. Uh, hang on. There's, there's one in this plant here. These little things. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll give them a taste of their own medicine, yeah? No slugs were consumed during the making of this video. So it looks like the weather and slugs could be contributing to the trouble we've had in the growing season so far. Let's go to a live debate for some further discussion. So Dave, not a good year so far. What's the plan for the coming? I've got still the potatoes to harvest. I've got pumpkins, onions, and on so seeds. Crossed on the green thing. Yeah, I'm going to try. Right, exactly. It's too late in the season. Radishes, salad leaves, cabbage. Do you think the rest of the season is going to be any better for you? Even if it is, what are you going to do with 100 radishes? The weather's picking up now. The weather's picking up. What if it doesn't last? You're wasting more time, money and effort on a lost cause. Lost cause? This season? You've got enough to be going on with weeding, streaming and watering what you got left. Give it up, Dave. This season is over. Got to keep trying. Got to stay optimistic. Optimistic? How much time do you actually spend here? It's not doing you much good, is it? My potatoes are all right. Big deal. All I'm saying, Dave, is take it a bit easier. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. This year is a write-off. What? What could have shown my viewers? You could always build a shed. A shed? Oh. Face it, Dave. No one really cares. That's hard. Harsh? You think that was harsh? I've seen other allotments with more success than you this year. You've took too much on with that whole new plot. You spend all your time strimming the grass trying to keep things neat. Not enough time to look after the vegetables. <sighs> Got a bit of a point there. Maybe it's bit not the point, weather. Maybe. maybe it's not the slugs. Maybe it's just you. Maybe you're just not very good. That's enough, that's enough. Who wrote this script? Who wrote this script? You? No. You? Hey. You? Not me, Dave. You wrote it, Dave. Oh, maybe I'm right. You should always listen to yourself, shouldn't you? It's a bit like therapy, this. You're getting all my deepest, darkest fears out in the open. How much do I? Oh, yeah. As always, Dave, zero cost. So I have been thinking lately, maybe I don't sow any more seeds for a couple of months. Maybe I start again in October, November, 
broad beans, garlic, onions, maybe I give up a bit of the new plot, maybe I've taken on too much. In the meantime, I could maybe prep the beds for a fantastic 2025, I could harvest my apples, I've got potatoes, onions, pumpkins and hopefully some green beans to harvest. So maybe I just enjoy the sun now it's here. Take a little bit easy as I decide to build a shed. So in summary, this year so far, not a total disaster. Just a little bit rubbish. And we can deal with that. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe, send me a comment. I'll see you next time. Cheers. I've got my weather symbols. Let's stick them on. Hang on, hang on. Stop.